Hi, the subject of this video is a bacterial cell wall. Now, long, long ago, there was this bacteriologist, Hans Christian Graham. Now, this guy developed a staining technique called the Graham's staining technique. Graham's staining technique to distinguish between the two major classes of bacteria. This staining technique when followed stained some bacteria purple and some bacteria pink. The bacteria that stained purple were termed as gram positive while the bacteria that stained pink were termed as gram negative. Later, the invention of electron microscope clarified that this color difference is because of the structural difference between the cells of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So, there is a structural difference between the cell, cell wall structure of the gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria and that is why gram staining leads to different colors in these two different classes of bacteria. To know more about the procedure and understand each step of the protocol in this staining technique, listen to the gram staining video in the practical section. Now let us look at the structure of a gram positive bacterial cell wall. This is the structure of a gram positive bacterial cell wall. Now as you can see, this cell wall is made up of a thick peptidoglycan layer. This peptidoglycan layer is also called murin. M U R E I N. Now, uh, when I say thick here, I said thick peptidoglycan layer, right? So, when I say thick here, in bacterial terms, it means only 20 to 80 nanometers. So, as I told you, this layer of peptidoglycan uh, is a characteristic feature of a gram positive cell wall. Now, what is this peptidoglycan? This peptidoglycan is a polymer. Now, what is a polymer? When small subunits are attached to each other by covalent bonds, they form a polymer. So, there are small subunits, they are attached to each other by covalent bonds and they form a polymer. These subunits, small subunits are called monomers. Monomers. Now, the gram-positive cell wall has an indistinct periplasmic space. An indistinct periplasmic space which is filled with something called a periplasm. Periplasm. This periplasm has a relatively small number of proteins. I say relatively small number of proteins because in a gram negative bacteria uh, the, uh, the periplasm is uh, quite big. It has a lot of proteins and when compared to that, uh, the periplasmic space, the proteins in the periplasmic space of a gram-positive bacteria is actually nothing. However, to compensate for the lack of proteins in the indistinct periplasmic space, the gram-positive bacteria actually secretes enzymes and these enzymes are called exoenzymes. Exoenzymes. Uh, the cell wall is also, as you can see, is it's, it's observed to contain a large number of tachoic acids. These are called tachoic acids. So, what are these tachoic acids? These tachoic acids are also polymers. And what are these polymers of tachoic acids made up of? They are the tachoic acids are actually polymers of glycerol or ribitol units and glycerol or ribitol units and these are joined together by phosphate groups. So you see the tachoic acids, right? So how are these tachoic acids placed in a gram-positive cell wall? Before I give you that information, I will give you a small information on the structure of peptidoglycan. However, you will learn the structure of a peptidoglycan which is a little bit complex in detail in a separate video. Now, this peptidoglycan 
uh, I told you before that it is a polymer, right? It is a polymer of two subunits. Uh, they are N acetyl muramic acid and N acetyl glucosamine. So there is one thing that you have to learn about this N acetyl muramic acid with respect to this video. It is that this N acetyl muramic acid has a hydroxyl group. What is a hydroxyl group? You can see it's an OH group. It has a N, uh, this N acetyl muramic acid has a hydroxyl group on its sixth position. And so why did we learn this piece of information out of the blue? Because our hero, Mr. Ticoic acid, is attached to this hydroxyl group on the sixth position in N acetyl muramic acid. So, this tecoic acid may also be attached to the plasma membrane itself. In that case, this tecoic acid is called a lipotecoic acid. Because, uh, as you know, the plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer. So, therefore, a tecoic acid that is attached to it is understandably called a lipotecoic acid. So, the tecoic acids, as the name suggests, has COO minus groups and it is because of these COO minus groups that the gram-positive bacterial cell wall has a negative charge. Uh, the name gram-positive is because is not because of the charge, it is because of the fact that it is it responds to the uh, gram staining technique and stains itself purple. That is why it is called a gram positive cell wall. However, you have to remember that a gram positive cell wall has a negative charge and this negative charge is because of the tecoic acids which have COO minus groups. Now, the tecoic acids are actually believed to have uh, the ability to maintain the structural integrity of the cell wall. So, that is all for the gram-positive cell wall. Uh, a small recap, a gram-positive cell wall has a simple structure. When you learn the gram-negative cell wall, you will really appreciate the simplicity of a gram-positive cell wall. Uh, it has a thick peptidoglycan layer, an indistinct periplasmic space. It secretes exoenzymes to compensate for the lack of proteins in its periplasmic space. And it has tecoic acids which give a negative charge to the cell wall. That's all.